Well, hello everyone and welcome to yet another Discussions with Dolf. I'm still on the island of Malta. In fact, I'm sitting on top of a fortification. I'm about 80 meters above sea level. I'm right on the edge and it's a sheer wall on the other side of this fence here going down to the sea. On the other side, I don't know how easily you can make it up, but there are more fortification walls. This was a heavily fortified uh, city, really, Valletta, the capital that we're in here. Uh, Malta itself was pretty heavily fortified. It's a tiny island. I think I mentioned it's about 30 kilometers across. It has, over the centuries been invaded by just about every force in the region so that's why they had all these fortifications you may recall last time I talked about the merits of having real estate by the sea how the closer you are to the ocean and the the higher you, the value of your property tends to be and the faster its growth tends to be and I even talked about the different terminology we use to describe property by the ocean now a couple of things I want to add to that there is of course this phenomenon that we've got at the moment of rising sea levels, despite the fact that there seems to be a large body, surprisingly, of reasonably learned people who would claim to deny that, who think it's a hoax. Well, sea levels, it seems, definitely are rising. They predict that by the end of this century, they could have risen 50 centimeters, 70 centimeters, in some parts of the world, even a meter. That is a, a particularly uh, frightening thought, I think, because many cities, of course, are built by the ocean. You only need to think of a place like Venice or New Orleans to realize that this could be a massive problem. So when I say that any piece of real estate by the sea is going to go up in value faster than any similar piece of real estate not by the sea, and I, of course, need to ameliorate that by recognizing that rising sea levels could change it in some regions. And even in cities where you've got quite a steep slope down to the ocean, it is, of course, very possible that most of the real estate will keep on going up in value very nicely. But the ones right at sea level, or maybe right now half a meter or a meter above sea level, they're the ones that are going to be caught out. You can tell which ones they are by spring tides, because when there is a spring tide, they're the ones that are first going to be affected. That's why a spring tide in Venice, of course, is very much of a problem. Um, so having said that, there are other things about real estate and the ocean that come to mind. I think last time I mentioned this new, it's not quite a cruise ship, but it's like a cruise ship, but it's got residences on board, apartments, and you can lease or buy these apartments and you stay on board the boat and you travel around the world. You are in, in a, another layer of a sense of the word, a true citizen of the world in that case. And that is real estate that also goes up in value. But I also want to highlight another kind of real estate, and that is farms out at sea. And and you may think I'm making this up or something, but I have personally owned farms out at sea. And of course, you might wonder what on earth could you farm out at sea? But in my case, it was um, oysters and mussels, green-lipped mussels. And uh, what you do is you either own or lease these farms where you have lines which dangle down into the ocean. Of course, the ocean of all the nutrients for these uh, mussels and oysters to, to grow and develop on. And then you can harvest them. And your, your income, if you like, is the harvest of the crop, just like from a conventional farm, your harvest might be the corn or the sheep or the cattle that you raise on that farm. And um, you can either own it, but in most cases you lease it from some kind of government body. So I'm one of the few people that can say that I have derived rental income, if you like, from having farms out at sea. There wasn't one square inch of land involved in this exercise. So the reason I'm highlighting this is when we think of being a real estate investor, we think very conventionally about having a single family home somewhere where you, you own the property and you rent it out to a tenant who lives there. But that needn't necessarily be the case. In fact, one of the things that I try to promote about commercial real estate is that it encompasses a lot more than just shops or industrial space. You know, commercial real estate also involves hospitals and rocket launch pads and uh, all kinds of strange and weird and wonderful facilities like that. And the interesting thing is that whatever happens with technology, whether electric cars will take over from internal combustion engine cars, which by the way, I'm convinced they will, and I think it will happen sooner than anyone, including myself, have ever predicted. And um, Volvo has announced that by 2018, which is only 18 months away, all of their cars will sport an electric motor. And France just last week announced that it will be illegal to sell internal combustion engine cars from 2040 onwards. So the revolution is happening and it's happening right now. And that might change the demand for oil storage facilities and oil refining plants and all that sort of thing. However, there will still be a need for industrial facilities where they assemble electric cars, where they um, maintain them and re repair engines and replace engines and all that sort of thing. So there will always be a demand for space. And all you have to do is figure out a way of how you can um, have something that someone is willing to pay money for. 
and I'm always reminded of a quote out of Roald Dahl's book, D-A-H-L, Dahl. Some of you may remember him from his children's story, but he also wrote a number of very wonderful um, adult books, you could say, or books directed not at the kid market. Adult books as an overtone I wasn't intending here, but one of them is My Uncle Oswald. And in this book, Roald Dahl quoted the, the um, story uh, teller as saying, it was Uncle Oswald, he's saying that making money has to fulfill two requirements. Firstly, he said, it has to amuse you immensely. And secondly, he said, it has to give a lot of pleasure to those from whom you extract the loot. And you've got to look at your real estate in this way. And by the way, I think it's a great turn of phrase the way he put that. But real estate is not just sitting on a piece of property that you force someone else to pay money on. A bit like when you play the game of Monopoly. No, one of your opponents, your friends or family, they happen to land on one of these pieces of real estate and they're forced to pay rent because the dice fell that way. No, you want to organize it so that you've got something that other people want so much, in fact, they can earn money from it or have pleasure by living there, that they are willing to pay you big dollars in order to be able to live there or work there. That's when you've got that magic formula that Roa Dahl talked about. Anyway, that's all we've got time for this week. I want to thank you very much for watching and until next time, I wish you, as always, successful investing. Thank you very much.